Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this PAC video short, we're going to cover facilitation tips 4, 5, and 6. The PAC processes. PAC is an acronym. It stands for Performance Based, Accelerated, Customer and Stakeholder Driven, Training and Development of Any Blend. We have 12 rules or guidelines for the PAC facilitator. In this video we're going to cover 4, 5, and 6. Redundancy by design. This is almost active listening in that I'm going to repeat myself and not others and I'm sometimes going to use the exact same words and phrases or I'm going to change them a bit from time to time. I'm seeking something that resonates with the group. If I say something and I can see by my face polling that they don't quite get it, that they're not with me, or that some of them are and some of them aren't, I may need to repeat myself exactly the same and or a little bit differently until I can see that they're with me. Use these four key communication behavior types. They are giving information, seeking information, testing understanding and summarizing, and defend attack. Let's discuss each one of these a little bit more. When I am a facilitator, there are times when I am giving instructions, telling everybody what we're going to do, be declarative. I'm giving information. Oftentimes, I preface my giving information by telling everyone in the room, I'm going to give you some information. And then I do. I also do that when I'm seeking information. I'll tell them, let me ask some questions here. Declaring my intent, being clear about what we're going to do next, is important. If you have a group of people and you're facilitating them through a process, there's no way to tell where their minds are at any particular point in time. They may be thinking about what just happened and whether or not they really agree with that or there's something that's bugging them in their mind and they can't quite put their fingers on it. So we help them by declaring our intent and using these four communication behaviors. We give information we sync information, and we declare ourselves as we're doing it. We also do this when we're testing our understanding or summarizing. I often say, let me test my understanding here. So what you're saying is X, Y, and Z, and what the person before you just said was one, two, three. Now, my takeaway on that is, and is that what you guys mean? I'm testing understanding. I'm declaring myself doing active listening for the purposes of allowing them to check and see if I've got it. And I'm the one who's writing it down on the flip chart paper. But I need to understand any nuances, any differences, any similarities between the things that people say. People often use different words to express the same thing, and unfortunately they also use the same words to express different things. It's tricky. When we're summarizing, I often declare my intent to do that. Let me summarize what I think I've heard here. And it's less so of me testing my own understanding than to make a declarative summation of what has just transpired to see if everybody's on board. I also check with them via my face poll. I look into their eyes. I look at the expressions on their faces. I ask them to nod their heads up and down for affirmative, side to side for negative, and if they're not quite sure, do a diagonal nod. That's a joke. When we have a defend and attack situation happening, there are ways for the facilitator to break through that. If two people are arguing and it gets to be quite heated, then the best way to end that defend attack spiral is to intervene with a summarization or a testing of understanding. So Bob, what you're saying that Sally is wrong about this because of X, Y, and Z, and Sally, your position is Bob's wrong because of one, two, three. Now I also introduced to groups the fact that 
in our communications, we often miscommunicate more than we communicate. In fact, it's very difficult to actually communicate with no variance. There's always some variance. And I introduced the concept to them of the heated agreement. You've all been in them, where people are arguing about something, and eventually somebody says, oh, what you mean is X, Y, Z, and I'm saying it A, B, C. But we're talking about letters and not numbers. Is that, is that what's going on here? Then they'll turn to me sheepishly and say, never mind, guy. And I say, oh, a heated agreement. We were in agreement, but we didn't know it, and we thought we were in disagreement, and we got heated about it. It happens. The facilitator needs to know how to process a group through those. In fact, I tell them that this is likely to happen, and when it does happen, this is what I'm going to do. And then, as it happens, I do what I say I'm going to do. I do what I said I was going to do. And it makes it a lot easier for the group to come to consensus, to forgive each other when they might have had a heated agreement, and to not take things too seriously. Review and preview. I start each day, segment of our process, a lesson in a course, the next step with a review preview. What we've just done leads to what we're going to do, and this is how. So I start something up by making the connections, making the transition, how one thing leads to another, or if it's not quite in a series, and what we're going to do next is really predicated on what we did three steps earlier, because that's the process, then I tie back to three steps earlier, remind them of that, do a review of, hey, remember yesterday morning, what we were doing is this, now we're going to use that and explain why and explain how this leads to other things downstream. I also do this at the end of each step. I summarize what we're doing and tie it back to what we've done previously and what we're going to be doing later. Maybe that's next or maybe that's in a couple of steps. I'm always trying to help the group position where are we in the process. It's often helpful to, to write that down on a flip chart page and post that and check things off as you go and point visually to we're doing this step three here and this is going to help us do step eight and nine later but before we do that we're going to have to do these other things and explain all that to them demystify it for them help them the 12 rules and guidelines for the PAC facilitator are intended to help you facilitate a group process. Beware of GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. Strive for good stuff in, good stuff out. 